Virginia Agriculture in the Classroom presents Drones in Agriculture. Thank you to today's sponsor, Hubner Seed. Good morning, everybody. I'm Dan Swafford. I work for Virginia Tech. I am a associate there, research associate. I work with 4-H, I work with FFA, and I do research on using drones on small farms. Uh, today, we're out at the Sheep Center at Virginia Tech, and if you look out, you can see all the baby lambs out there. Uh, we've probably got 100 or so baby lambs, and my research is using drones to help farmers better manage their sheep flocks. What are some ways we can use the drone on the farm? Well, I guess being that we're out at the sheep farm, I want to talk about how we can use it with livestock first. Uh, it allows us to go out, and you see way back behind us how far those sheep are back there, that uh, we can go out and fly it and check them. Now, I think that's real important, especially as people get older on the farm. I'm a grandpa, and it saves me a lot of steps if I don't have to walk out there and check on them. I can see if the uh, user got a lamb, it can check and see if anybody's ha uh, sick, and uh, some people even use them to help move the sheep from one field to another if they don't have a dog that can do it. Uh, most of the work on farms though, drones are used with crops. They can fly over the crops with special sensors, special cameras, and see how the crop's doing, see where it maybe have some disease or insect problems, or it can see if it needs some more water in a place, or more fertilizer. And uh, probably right now, most of the work, that's the way it's used on the farm is to check on crops. Now the drone we're gonna be flying today is the Phantom 4 made by DJI. Uh, DJI is a corporation out of China, and they make 70% of all the drones that are flown in the United States. Uh, this one is probably one of the most popular right now, and I like to fly it because it's a rather large drone, and on the farm, you want to be able to see that drone when you're flying it. Now, there's some new models that have come out that are a lot smaller, and everybody likes them because they're easy to tote around, but they're hard to see on the farm. And if you're out, you know, checking your cows or checking your sheep, you want to be able to keep track of where that drone is. Now, uh, today I'm flying a special propeller, which is a lot quieter than the normal propellers that come on it, and it doesn't scare the sheep as bad. And uh, I found out over the years that uh, when you're flying, uh, the quieter you can be, the more the sheep like it, and it doesn't bother them. Okay, but let's take a look at this drone. We've got, drones have about three major parts. First of all, this is the computer inside that flies it. Now, everybody in here is probably, you know, played with a computer at home or worked some games on a computer. That's what keeps it flying. It has four motors. Each motor turns one of the propellers, and this creates a big, strong wind that allows it to lift off the ground. Okay, just like when you play a game at home, you have a controller. We have the controller here, just like you have your sticks at home to make that game play. You have your sticks here. This one makes the drone go up and down. This one makes the drone go out and come back. Okay. We're going to set up, folks, and uh, get this drone started up. First of all, we're going to get out the pizza. Now, we're not going to eat pizza, but we're going to use this. I call it the pizza. It's a landing pad, and it's very important that when you fly, you have one of these. Whoa. It keeps your drone clean when you take off and when you land.
Mr. Swafford, what are some of the important rules about flying drones? Hey, probably the most important rule is this number one. Anytime you fly a drone outside, you always want to be able to see it. These drones will fly several miles away, but as soon as it gets out of your sight, you're going to be in trouble. So you always want to make sure you see it. Never fly a drone by yourself. Always have somebody with you to kind of pay attention to where, where that drone is. Now, that might be mom or dad or older brother or sister, but you always want to have somebody with you. Another question that's asked me a lot besides does it have a camera is how high can it fly? Now, according to the law, you cannot fly a drone over 400 feet in the air. So that would be a little more than the length of a football field. After that, it becomes difficult to see. Like I said, I'd like to fly the, the Phantoms because they're large enough that you can see it 400 feet off the ground. Some of the newer ones, the smaller ones, you can't see them, and it makes it very difficult and very dangerous. Okay, another one that's very important is that you never want to fly drones over other people that aren't with you. Now, if you've got mom and dad and older brother and you out there flying the drone, you can fly the drone over them. But if you're out at a park or at a baseball game, you don't want to fly it over those people. You want to be back far enough that if the drone fell, it wouldn't hit anybody. Uh, probably one more important one is that you never want to fly a drone near an airport. That you know, so it won't have a chance of running into an uh, airplane. Those are problems. Did you learn something new and exciting today about drones and agriculture? Call someone on the phone, write a letter, or draw pictures, and tell someone what you learned. And do your own research about drones. You never know when an interest might turn into a hobby, a hobby to a passion and a passion to a career. Thank you for watching. To learn more, go online to aginthaclass.org.